So our next speaker, Doug Fitch, is from Western Australia. And he's involved in an organisation called AgWorld and he's very much in that sphere. So I'm sure that uh, his will be an interesting add-on to your presentation. So please welcome Doug Fitch. Okay, thanks very much for the opportunity. Um, I promised Kylie that I'd stick to the 20 minutes and I'm gonna do that. But um, I guess the, uh, the um, subject today is how can farmers make better use of digital um, information about their farm and, and what the opportunities are and the challenges that they face. And I think um, they're fairly broad questions and uh, just like our last speaker, it's not easy to articulate in 20 minutes, but we'll do our best. I've actually assumed here that uh, most farmers aren't uh, using information well, uh, in fact, very little to the extent they need or can. I think, um, just, uh, yep. It's always good to understand how, um, the how um, of the, before we understand the how, it's always good to understand what the actual problem is, I should say. And while I think everyone in this room here understands the actual problem for agriculture to a large extent, uh, I'd like to just have a, a quick uh, look at that. And we've talked about a lot today, you know, it's all about profitability for farmers. Uh, and just putting on the farmer's hat, it's like farmers are really just trying to work out each year what their profit will be and what it'll look like in the future for their enterprise and their family commitments. And yields are flatlining, we hear that today, costs are rising, land values fluctuate and that impacts my debt to equity ratio. Um, as a farmer, my return on investment is lower than needed for lots of reasons. Programs, I have to make my program larger to compete maybe. Risk is increasing financially. Seasonal variation continues, doesn't matter what you think about climate change, the seasonal variation just does continue. And land degradation uh, continues globally at an alarming rate. Uh, compliance is increasing. The buyers and the consumers want more information from me as the farmer, and I have to pay to someone to get that information to them and comply. And uh, my community in my town is getting smaller, and industry building capacity is an issue for us as an industry, and there's a lack of crystal balls out there to solve all of those problems. So the summary is it is a real challenge and so as a farmer, when I look at it, I look at risk and I, I look at just a quick Venn diagram here. Uh, assets, what have I got to work with? What's my true position? Threats, what can I control? What are the probabilities of actually hitting those expectations that I've set out to achieve? And what information can I, can I validate that with? And from a vulnerability perspective, how exposed am I if things go bad? What level of loss can be absorbed without losing future viability? And how many losses can I take? And I guess it's easy to stand back as industry and say, well, if the farmers, you know, to the farmers, well, if your numbers don't add up, you just don't do it. But that's not farming, right? They're there for the long haul and thankfully. And I think since 1960, I read a survey is about the input increase has been around 700% and we've only got a 167% increase in yields. So it's about fourfold around the wrong way. And I, you wonder, well, what is coming and how can we make a change? How can we remain sustainable? And as a farmer, I'd be thinking about sustainability and the information I need about economically. Is, what am I, is this sustainable, what I'm doing now? Will it deliver the returns needed while taking care of the agronomic requirements and the environment at the same time. And then from an agronomic perspective, is this sustainable? Can I replicate it? Should I replicate it? And address economics and environment at the same time as that? And environmentally, is it sustainable? You know, it's not about tree hugging, it's about looking after your asset. And am I providing and protecting my asset correctly? And uh, am I looking after my profit at the same time? So I think, when we look at that, let's just give you a view and get into the farmer's mindset a, a little bit as I see it and from those that I talk with. I think I took a step back here on how can they make better use of the information and I think, uh, as I alluded to previously, there is a, a lack across the industry as service providers 
as well as farmers in terms of understanding information management and data science and connecting everybody up in that process. And this has been demonstrated also just through a lack of analytical systems across the industries, um, providers and the farmers themselves. And when I look around farms, and I go to plenty of them, um, my personal experience is that other than some basic paper record keeping and um, some accounting software that the accountant probably runs and a budgeting tool, in general, and I'm talking globally, uh, the, um, the rest of it is just carried out off the back of an envelope or a written plan provided by a service provider which is not measured uh, and it's probably not adhered to half the time. So I think there's a real challenge and I think farmers uh, as a whole and as the industry, you know, how many, how many multi-million dollar asset holders or businesses have no information management systems other than a lot of farmers? And uh, there are, you know, these businesses that have multi have information management systems, tie them together with processes. And those processes are used to measure the daily progress that we make. And I don't think farmers want to be exempt from that. I just think they have been exempt for a number of reasons, which I'll talk about shortly. But I think if I was start to think about how can I use my information, I'd actually be saying, well, I might bucket my information from a cropping perspective, so we'll balance up the last animal health one, um, from a uh, plan, monitor, manage and improve. Because if you plan it, then you're starting to be proactive. If you monitor it and you apply some measurement, you can then analyse it and then you can improve it. So with that in mind, I guess I then move to this. So when using a system, uh, of any type, or an app, for all those out there that love their apps, people commit to using products that there is actually practical and measurable value. And I liked one of the last points in there, you actually have to connect the right people together to find that value sometimes. And so farmers themselves need to find value in the output of the information that's being provided. I think it's good to recognise that data alone, contrary to some people's belief, that uh, data alone won't act, will only give limited insight into the situation. Actually, apps and information systems aren't about to save the world, right? It's actually about people and systems and processes. So knowledge alone, yep, it's, uh, it can have some power, but I actually think the, uh, the use of that knowledge at the right time is where the power lays. And I think farmers can should actually commit to uh, a long all approach for using information management systems now that we are moving into that space and the availability is there. And that's a first good step to doing that. So I think um, really out of that point, if farmers can capture, capture the fact that when you take an information system and you tie it together with processes and you tie it together with them and their service provider with the vision and the wisdom and experience that they have, in a proactive way, that is when the data starts to become really powerful. I think as a farmer, you have to be purposeful. And uh, this is an unusual diagram, but I thought I'd put it up anyway. The um, Swiss Army knife has uh, many moving parts and it was developed to be a knife with lots of added pieces and tools in solving limited size problems um, that arose in specific situations. And soldiers carried it in a place where they could access it and use it when the time came. And each tool had a purpose and has a purpose and it can be used at that time with the skill of the person to solve that problem. It doesn't solve everything. It didn't pull gearboxes out of tanks and it won't pull it out of a tractor. But it can be used for specific purposes. And to get the best out of information, I think you've got to understand its limitations and its use and its applicability. So first understanding what the problem, what problem will that bit of information that I'm using actually solve? What information is needed and when? How often will it be used and actually by who? And how much information is needed in each situation? Because there is a lot of information out there. And who will I share that information with? Who can help me with it? What is the value of that information to the others that are working with me? And what information will follow the information that's just been viewed to solve that problem 
next? What will, be, what will I need to capture? What will the next step be? And I think that going back to the reason farmers do not have a handle on information management is because it's complicated. It's a science in itself and it's up to service providers like AgWorld and others out in the market and the service providers to actually start working as an industry towards information management and understanding how to utilise it and do it in small steps. I think the challenge here has been that these systems, the bottom line says it all, few if any connect to each other. Why is that? Well, data standardisation has been a challenge. Why? Well, because people have wanted to lock people in with their software so that they pay next year's subscription. Is that true? Yes, it is. Did the telcos survive that? No, they haven't. They now unlock your phone when you buy it. It's unlocked. Happening, it's, uh, it's changing. There's self-interest. Um, it still goes on with data standardisation. There's some great global plays on out there in terms of actually getting to some data standards. There's gonna, that's going to expose a lot of self-interest as well. But I actually think the market forces across the industry will actually play out and actually get to a place where we do have a good data standardisation that will allow systems to integrate and allow people to choose. AgWorld was actually invented to enable the shipping of data in and out of the system and to centralise it. I think what we discovered is that big data is not where farmers need to focus. Right? They actually need to focus on, let's call it little data. And in this case, I'm talking about their information and what it means to actually use that information to underpin the uh, decisions that they have in their business. Now, the good news in all of that, I think, is that cloud works for farmers, right? Cloud, I Googled it actually, when did it start? And they actually said around 1950, people started thinking about it, but no one did anything until about 2000, I think. So 2005, it really took off here in Australia. And uh, it's, it's a scalable, scalable system. And uh, it allows for multiple devices, single accounts, permission engines for share using uh, to enable the sharing of data, real-time data. So it is good for farmers and it removes that whole problem of I don't have an IT shop and I don't want to hire a, I don't have an IT shop in my town and I don't want to hire a geek to work on my farm. So, you know, that's, that's kind of how it sits and I think it's a, it's a great opportunity and that is one of the things I would be looking at hard if I was choosing a platform as a farmer. I think the opportunities, and it's been alluded to today, is that um, the, uh, in terms of the thing that's missing is collaboration. And collaboration is we already work collaboratively as a community. If you have an agronomist and you're a farmer, and you've got an agronomist, you've got a spray contractor, you've got workers, you've got truck drivers that come on and off your farm, that you're working in collaboration anyway. So now what we want to do is create a data community, right? And I think that's a great concept and something we work towards hard. And that is about sharing that information. Because one of the biggest problems farmers have is at the end of the day, which is a long day, they do not want to go back and sit at their desk and enter in data and make models and things work. That just doesn't happen. These tools have to be usable in field they have to be mobile, most stuff is done on mobile, and they, they need people to contribute to their data community, right? And to their data, their central source. And once those communities start to contribute, their business will change. So if you're a service provider out there, your business will change, trust me, it will change, because you will actually really start to understand how the use of that data is being interpreted in the mind of the farmer and actually what they're trying to achieve in a greater depth than you perhaps have before. That has been our experience. And I think that's a, that's a great thing. I think the next step is once you start getting that data centralised, these fantastic tools that you see and you hear about developed by our CSIROs and, and our ag departments and, and private businesses will be able to be auto-populated and connected and start to provide snapshots or reports of the state of play at the right time. But what needs to happen there is it needs to be an expression of data, right? So you get um, all your data into a place and it needs to express it in a way that I as a farmer can actually understand it and utilise it in context with what I'm doing, not have to sit down and actually nut out what the heck it's trying to say. 
And so that's, that's, that's where we're going. We're not there yet, but that is where we're going. We want to be there because it will affect the way we sell our produce, the risk associated with our produce, the way we insure. There's some fantastic programs coming around insurance and managing your crop in terms of risk and the, the way we approach finance with our banks. Don't forget banks, you might not like them, but they are part of the, the financial plan and they have to ensure that their risk is, is okay. And by being a farmer who has your info and presenting it well, you can do that. I think when you implement an information management platform, um, you need to understand the output and the effort required as a farmer and even as a service provider. Our experience with service providers, of which we have a very large market share in Australia and we're certainly making headway in the US, is that, that uh, they themselves don't understand information management and the value of that information to their business in terms of intellectual property, be it to the farm or to their own business. I think you need to commit and resource the processes long term to actually achieve the result you're looking for. It's not, it can't really be a toe in the water approach. You've got to know where and who will use that information. So here comes the tricky bit. Who do I share it with, right? So already there is a lot of information out there on, on the old reliable bit of paper that we've got here. And on spreadsheets and your bank has info, and your accountant has info. I think what we need to understand is which information are we willing to share and we need to have an agreement up front that we are willing to opt in to sharing with that specific party whom we understand what their interest is and we need to understand what the if we're going to have a break from that relationship just like if I left my accountant he understands that I'm going to need all of my accounting data and a copy of it he will keep right because he has his issues to manage. And we understood that up front. And it's going to be the same for farmers. And I think farmers already have a huge amount of legacy data. I think it's worth keeping, it's worth investigating. There's new technologies on how to get that into a digital state. Um, but you need to make sure you own your data. And, and I guess the thing there is, in, from our perspective in AgWorld, under our agreement is the author is the owner of the information. And uh, outside of that, you have agreements with people on how you share. And I think only choosing systems that have a philosophy um, and a vision similar to what yourself is. Uh, it's no good buying some off-the-shelf American product in a, from, for Australia use or from England or whatever. You want to buy a local program supported well by people. That's what Matthew was saying this morning. Actually, the program is one thing. It's actually... Who are the software engineers behind it? Have they got ag scientists? Do they have data scientists? And do they get out in field or are they stuck in an office in San Francisco, right? And that's what we see a lot of, you've got to be in field. So you want to think about that as an industry provider and as a farmer so that as you move forward, understanding that software is never finished. If it is finished, it is finished, right? There's got to be something else coming on after it or it will become redundant. So it's really, really important to take those things on board. And then, as you take those steps, you will start to understand your information and it'll present to be well uh, a good thing for your business. You don't need a lot of data to change your decision. I'll leave you this final thought. Looking out the window at the airport and I see a plane and I said to the person next to me, you reckon this thing will fly? And they said, yeah. I said, OK. So we've got no data, right? I look over and I see a heap of engineers standing around another plane over there, right? And about eight out of ten of them are going, no. Nah. And two are going, yeah. And I'm thinking, so eight are saying, no, nah, it's not going to fly, and two are saying it is. Am I going to board that plane now that I've got that data, right? And that's just one small example of using data, right? It doesn't have to be a lot. It's an it's a odd example, I suppose, but it's still... Nevertheless, you don't need a lot of data. What you've got to be able to do is look at the information and understand what you're going to do next, not be left with, now what? And leave it with you. Thanks. <laughs>